book can take you anywhere. Turn the pages and you'll be there. Come on, join us, you'll see. We're reading with Carrie Lee. Hi, everyone. Thanks for joining us for another episode of the Read with Carrie Lee show. I am your host, Carrie Lee. Today, we have another amazing author from another part of the United States. We have Miss Shanique Alston, and I'm going to ask you, Miss Shanique, could you tell us where you are joining us from today? Yes, hi, Carolyn, and your audience. So I live in Garner, North Carolina. It's a little bit south of Raleigh, North Carolina. Oh, that's amazing. You're our neighbor to the south, because you're south of... Virginia today. Yeah. So we are going to get into a very special book. It's Anna, Kid Engineer. Now I'm going to turn it over to you, Shanique, because I want to find out all about Anna and how she is a kid, but she's still an engineer. So take it away and let's get into the story. Great, thanks. It was that time of the year again the annual science fair at East Creek Elementary School was in five weeks. Anna was in fifth grade this year and wanted to have an awesome project, especially since this was her last year of elementary school. The last two years, she had the hardest time coming up with a good project. She thought back on her third grade project, an erupting volcano like many other kids had. Oh, how embarrassing that was. And her volcano didn't even erupt that high. Then our fourth grade project wasn't much better, but this year was going to be different, or was it? Hey, Anna, the science fair is in five weeks. I'll never forget that year when a bunch of us did those volcanoes. I guess no one will ever forget since they put a picture of us in the newspaper. The adults thought it was so cute, but we sure didn't think it was cute, our friend Joshua said. Joshua was in the same lineup with the other kids with the volcano project a couple of years ago. I know they say that great minds think alike, but that year with the volcanoes was just ridiculous, Joshua said. Nah, no great ideas yet, I sighed. Hey, don't be discouraged. You love tinkering and creating new things. I know you can come up with an awesome idea, Joshua said. Are you entering this year, I asked Joshua. No. Mom said that I have enough on my plate already, and that if I can't put my best foot forward, that I shouldn't enter it. But I'll be there rooting you on, Joshua said as he smiled. Thanks, Joshua. I know that you will, I said as we were about to part ways to head to our homes. Hey, Anna, how are you doing, my dad asked as I got home. Great, Dad, I said, smiling. I just love my dad. He was always there to greet me when I got home from school and he always had a snack waiting for me. And we chat and eat. Our talks didn't usually last long, but I just loved that part of the day. Plus, it was a great time to sneak in an unhealthy snack while mom was upstairs cleaning up. The science fair is coming up, and I don't know what I'm going to do this year, I told him. Do you have any ideas? Oh no, I don't have any ideas. Remember, remember it was me who suggested the volcano a couple of years ago but I know that you'll come up with something really great. I see you in your room all the time tinkering. Why don't you take one of those ideas and turn it into a science project, Dad suggested. Dad was right. I did enjoy tinkering in my room. It all started with mom getting me an inventor's box a few years ago. The box had all kinds of odds and ends in it, and mom told me to let my imagination run wild. Every now and then she replenished the box. On Saturdays, I started going to yard sales and buying old toys that I take apart and repurpose. My inventions started out very simple at first, but the more I tinkered and tried different things, the more cool things I came up with. I learned to be more and more persistent. If an idea didn't work, I just tried something different until it did. For Christmas gifts, I even started making gifts for my cousins. They thought the toys I made were so cool. The last Christmas, I gave one of my little cousins a toy car that moved when you clap. He became a clapping machine. He ran around the house all day, clapping, grinning, and chasing that car. But what did all of my tinkering have to do with the science project? Was what I was doing considered science? It must, Dad and Joshua both suggested I turn my tinkering into a science project. 
So for the next five weeks, I tinkered, I sketched, I designed. I went through trial and error. Some things worked, but a lot of things didn't, but I kept trying. Sometimes I'd get really stuck, but then I'd just ask my mom to take me to the library to find a couple of books. I'd get a new idea and then I'd be off to tinker some more. I went through a lot of trial and error until finally I had it, my science fair project. I just hoped there would be a category I could enter into. Finally, the big day came and I was super nervous. I walked up to the gym, rolling my wagon with the main part of my science fair project covered up inside of it. As I walked up to one of the judges, she asked me, what category will you be entering your project into? The engineering category, I said. I had done some research and it turned out that people considered what I had been doing to be engineering. Engineering category? Let's see. Um, I see chemistry, biology, botany, zoology, environmental sciences, physics, and even math, but not engineering, the judge said. But certainly engineering is a science. It's a combination of science and math. Here, I'll add that category to the list. Go right over there and set up your project. Come by later with a sign that says engineering, the judge said, as she smiled. I breathed a sigh of relief. Not being able to enter the science fair after all of my hard work would have been worse than the volcano year. I gave my dad the thumbs up, and then he went outside to get the other pieces of the project that he had in the back of his truck. I went over to the section of the gym the judge pointed me to and began setting up my project. I was so excited to share with everyone what I had been working on for the last five weeks. As judges, parents, and other kids passed by, I began asking for volunteers to try out my project. I had created a mini roller coaster. A fourth grader came by and she had a look of awe on her face. What's that, she asked. It's a mini roller coaster. There's a button inside the cart. Just press it and off you'll go. Wanna give it a try, asked, I asked her. Sure do, she said. So she climbed into the cart and fastened the seat belt I had made. When I said go, she pressed the button mark go and off she went. The car slowly climbed a little hill and then paused at the top. Then it made a sudden drop down the hill. And just as it did that, a camera snapped a picture of the girl. And boy, it was a hilarious photo. The sudden fall had totally caught the girl off guard which was just the reaction I had been hoping for. But soon after that, more and more people began lining up to have their turns on the roller coaster. Principal even kept getting in line for a turn. Pictures of him coming down the roller coaster were super cool. My dad, mom, and Joshua came walking over to me as the science fair was coming to an end. They all looked so excited. Joshua had several snapshots of himself making crazy faces as he ridden my roller coaster at least five times. My mom had a big gift box in her hands. Anna, we are so proud of you. Even if you don't win, we are so proud of how hard you worked these last five weeks, she said. I opened the box and it was full of the coolest tinkering items. I couldn't wait to get home to try to create something else. Thanks, mom, I said. And just when I thought the day couldn't get any more exciting, the judge announced the winner while riding my roller coaster. As she was about to drop down the hill, she yelled, First place goes to you. My tinkering had paid off. That's amazing. I know that so many kids are thinking about what they're going to do for science projects next school year. And I'm not sure if anyone would build a roller coaster, but they are bound to get inspiration from Anna. So what was your inspiration behind writing this book? So like a lot of authors, you know, you, you get into the game thinking, you know, I can make some money doing this, right? And then you, you get into it and you realize it's a lot more work than you thought, you know, you <laughs> for yourself. So, you know, it wasn't my initial inspiration, but since I've started writing this series, I'm hoping now to encourage kids to use STEM to help people. So my next book, uh, particularly, so the next book in the series is called Andre Kid Aviator. In this book, I really try to encourage kids to, you know, use STEM to help other people. Yes, that is an amazing thing to do. I know STEM is one of the building rocks of most of our educational system right now to get children learning and tinkering and getting excited about 
science, technology. Um, I forgot what that E was. Engineering. Engineering, of course. <laughs> And at the end, I should remind me that engineering and math. And those are such pillars that, you know, we use every day. And it's great to get children excited about STEM. And thank you for writing this book to be able to get them thinking and get those gears going. So you said that you have um, Andre, Kid Aviator. Do you have any other books in mind? So yeah, I'm hoping that this year I'll get started with Abigail Kids Something I Don't Know Yet. So I have four children and the books uh -huh. are being named after them. So my first daughter is Annalise. So this one's Anna. My son oh, is Andre. Awesome. So I have four. So I'm hoping to get at least two more written. So I'm hoping to start on Abigail's this year. I'm, I okay. haven't quite decided what I'm going to do. She, Abigail is an artist. She likes to draw. She also loves to tinker. She's constantly making stuff. <laughs> wow. I definitely draw inspiration from you and from your children with going out and exploring their world and exploring their minds and being able to do magnificent things. So before we go, is there, are there any books that have inspired you when you were growing up? Um, so I'm, I was good at math growing up, but actually history was my favorite subject. So I like to read historical fiction books. Uh, one okay. of the books I remember reading was Roll of Thunder, Hear My Cry. Um, yes. Uh, that's a book I was reading. I started reading that to the children. Um, so, I mean, I wouldn't say it was an inspiration, but I really liked historical fiction books. Um, yeah. That, and even in math, I even mean, in college, I, I majored in two divergent things. I majored in math and political science. Um, okay. Yeah. All right. I, no, I enjoyed historical fiction books growing up. Yes, absolutely. Well, we know that I, I definitely see your book being one that will continue to inspire children um, about engineering and about aviation with Andre Kid Engine um, Aviator. <laughs> and you know, I hope that you will continue. You said you have at least two more books in you, and we hope to possibly have you here again on the Read with Carolee show. So thank you for joining us today from North Carolina. Thank you, Carolee. And thank you, audience, for joining us for another Read with Carolee show. Make sure you join us here every Saturday for a new author. And remember to always. Grab a book and read. Thanks for watching another amazing episode of the Read with Carolee show. We have amazing authors coming by every week. So don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe below. You don't want to miss a thing.